we can start. Thank you for um, attempting to this meeting, uh, which is about uh, lean phone and uh, video conferencing. Mm, my name is Jean Monnier. I'm involved in the lean phone project uh, since uh, 2010. And I'm also part of the company uh, which is backing the, the lean phone project uh, since uh, 10 years almost. Uh, so first, I'm going to provide you with a quick introduction on LeanPhone and then have a couple of words around uh, video conferencing with SIP, followed by an introduction on uh, the selecting forwarding unit, which is the, the art of the modern uh, video conferencing systems, and later to talk about what is required on the SIP client part to be able to interrupt with this kind of uh, video conferencing system. And finally, uh, the conclusion. Okay, so just a couple of words about LeanPhone. LeanPhone is a voice over IP client uh, implementing the SIP protocol, which uh, started in early 2000. It's available on uh, on Linux, uh, Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. Uh, it uses SIP as the base standard for almost uh, everything, including uh, audio, video call, and instant messaging presence, every, everything which is required to, for real-time communication. And uh, it also provides some end-to-end uh, -end encryption for uh, for messaging based on, uh, on the signal protocol, uh, more or less. The LinFone team developed the LinFone software, but also a uh, SIP server, which is basically a SIP proxy. And if you want to use a uh, SIP account, it's possible to create them on, uh, on our website for testing purpose mainly. OK, video conferencing with SIP in a couple of words. Mm. It's around a couple of standards. The first one is SIP, uh, basic SIP with uh, invite, refer, and buy to create conference, join the conference to be able to uh, invite other participants to the conference. And it's more almost uh, based on the RFC 4579, which defines how to create the <coughs> conference and uh, how to join uh, the conference. And there is also some interesting standard, which is the RFC 5366, which is about defining the list of the participants uh, of, of the conference. So it's for the establishment of the conference. And uh, the next uh, important standard is uh, what we call the conferencing events package, which is based on, based on the subscribe notify uh, uh, RFC. And the idea is that when a participant joins the conference, it initiates a uh, SIP subscribe to the server, and the server then notifies to every participant of the conference which are the states of the conference. Who is in, who is going to join, is there audio, video, everything which is related to the status of the, the conference. On the media port, it's regular RTP. And for this uh, video conferencing project, we added the support of two important RFC, which are about uh, bundling all the media stream into the same uh, socket in order to avoid to have too many uh, RTP sockets, RTP stream per, uh, per SIP client. And regarding the security, it's a regular uh, SIP TLS. For the, for the signaling, and for the media path, uh, it's either uh, SDES, where the symmetric key is set in the SDP, or the RTP, or even SRTP DTLS. And for the RTP itself, uh, it's a standard AES. OK, now let's introduce the, what the selective forwarding units. And I'm going to start with the description on what we used to have uh, for conferencing server. So uh, in the past, 
the media mixer received the video from every reuser, decode the video stream, perform the mixing, it could be mosaic or any, uh, any layout, and then re-encode all the stream to be uh, sent to every participant. This kind of software uh, exists uh, since uh, 30 years, maybe 20. Uh, here I just want to, to show you um, uh, a page that I uh, saw in the RFC 7667, uh, which is about the RTP topology of uh, former uh, of legacy conventing system. So for each client, A, B, C, here it's audio, but it could be the same for video. You have one RTP stream going to the media server and one RTP stream uh, which uh, come from the media server to each client and it's server side that everything is decoded, mixed and sent back to, to client. The advantage of uh, this approach was that it was very simple from the client side as uh, calling a conferencing server was almost the same as calling a, uh, a regular user agent. Uh, the drawbacks of uh, this approach was that uh, video layout was defined server side, so you could have one or two different layouts. Uh, it uh, requires a lot of uh, CPU resources server side as every mm, video stream has to be decoded and then re-encoded and end-to-end uh, -end encryption was not uh, possible due, due to the fact that uh, video was uh, decoded. Now, if we go to the selecting forwarding unit, the idea is that the media server is no more decoding or and then encoding <coughs> every video stream, but is more switching video coming from every device to every uh, other devices. And uh, it could be done uh, depending on several policies, like uh, active speaker of Mosaic. And for that, we also need some information coming from each client, like the volume of the audio stream in order to be able to know who is talking without having to decode the audio stream as well. Uh, if I go to the same schema, still from the RFC 7667, uh, now you can see that from the RTP standpoint, you still have one RTP stream for each client coming, going to the media server, but now you have also one incoming video stream per participant of the, of the conference. So if we follow the audio, the, the video stream from the client A, you can see that it is copied to client B, but as well to client F. <coughs> so it's no more a media mixer, but a switching matrix, more, more or less. Uh, what are the advantages of this uh, architecture is that Video layout is no more uh, defined server side, but the client uh, can decide where to display uh, every participant of the conference. It's, uh, it's an application uh, choice, no more a server choice. Uh, it scales very well, as there is no uh, resources which are used server side to decode or encode the video stream. And finally, it's open the door for end-to-end -end encryption as the media server no more has to know the content of uh, a video stream. The drawback of this approach is that uh, it requires the SIP client to be able to um, manage multi-stream, which was not the case for a standard one-to-one uh, -one call. Uh, so for the SIP user agent, what we had to change are the, <coughs> the following mainly. It's mainly about multi-stream requirement. In the past, the C client uh, 
can send, uh, was able to send one audio stream plus <coughs> one video stream. Stream now, it requires the the client to be able to send one, but most of the time two video stream, one for um, high uh, resolution uh, video and an another a second one for uh, thumbnail, as well as being able to receive what video stream per participant of the video conference. Just uh, an example of, uh, of the SDP to, to show what is involved. So bundle mode, as I said, which is required. RTP MUX as well, it's to limit the number of, uh, uh, of uh, socket used for the media. Uh, this extension is related to uh, audio level in order to be able to display who is talking and also for the server to be able to select which video stream is, uh, is talking. It still uses IC uh, to be able to uh, limit the, the usage of media relay. And from the video part, what you can see is that there, is, there are two video stream in receive only, one for the high resolution uh, of the camera and another for the thumbnail. So it means that we encode two times the, the video. It could be replaced by, by uh, some uh, video encoder like uh, H.264 AVC, which uh, support the multi-layer uh, functionality. But if, if you want to be able to do that with uh, simple VP VP8, uh, it's better to encode two times the video. And for the receiving side, there is one video stream because in this example, there is only one participant in the, in the, in the video conference. But this part would be, uh, would be, uh, multiplied by the number of participants of the, of the conference. Mm. Okay, so this is uh, for uh, what we have done on, on, on the Linfone project uh, for this uh, feature. It could be tested uh, with the Flexi SIP server, which is uh, currently running on our uh, infrastructure. So you can create a video conference thanks to this uh, uh, conference factory uh, CPURI and uh, using uh, a Linfone client with version above uh, 5.0, it's possible to, uh, to join a video conference. Okay, thank you. Conclusion. Okay, <laughs> okay. so uh, now Linfone is, uh, is capable of, uh, of joining video conference uh, in two modes, mosaic and active speaker. Uh, using a selective forwarding unit, which allow to scale. Mm, possible evolution that we have in mind is to implement the XCON uh, conferencing server in order to be able to manage conference from a website or to have something more advanced. We are also thinking about adding end-to-end -end encryption to this uh, video conferencing server, and why not to provide the compatibility with WebRTC, knowing that the media protocol that we use are very close than WebRTC. <coughs> Useful link, if you want to, to have more information about this work, you can go to the Linfone website and to have a look on our uh, GitHub. That's it, if you have a um, question. Thank you. Not yet, because uh, the, the work to move from a regular SIP phone with only supporting one audio stream and one video, video stream to support this multi-stream uh, is very significant. And uh, I'm not aware of any working, work in progress uh, so far. So if you want to, to use it, you have to go with, uh, with this phone. 
even if it's fully standardized, uh, if, if we are following standard. Good job. Thank you. From performance perspective, have you been any benchmarking of the the load and what will be the test? Mm. Not yet, not yet, but we are quite confident that it's going to scale as we have removed all the needs for audio or video encoding through our sign. So it's really about uh, switching of packets. Yeah, maybe the question might be around the network on the client side. <coughs> around network, uh, mm, on the client side, <coughs> as uh, we are using, we are sending two resolution. Uh, from the client, a uh, high resolution and low resolution. And in the case of uh, active speaker, we only send back to every cl client the high resolution of the people which is currently, who is currently talking and low resolution of every other participant. So it highly limits uh, the, the needs of uh, bandwidth. Yes? Um, on the client side, uh, you now uh, decode more than one uh, Correct. Do the phones support this uh, It's almost uh, the same answer. We decode one high resolution yes. and many low resolution. And uh, the CPU resources is, uh, is uh, depend on the resolution of the video that you have to decode. Uh, just some, uh, one quick question about the SDP that you showed before. So mm -hmm. there were two receive only screens for the client for the was that from the client it's or it was from the server yes oh, okay, yeah, because my bad that was my yeah. Yeah, it so like the, the server received two two video from the client one in high resolution and one other in low resolution and sent uh, one video to this client as there is only one participant in this uh, conference. Okay, so for, from the client perspective, when you switch from big big resolution to low resolution, you still use the same M line that you have before for to send to, to, uh, send no, it's, to the client. It's yes, exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.